Hi everyone, and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter. And in today's video, we're going to be having a look at something in 009 scale. It has been a while since I last looked at something in 009. I can't remember the last time it was when I bought something in 009, but it has been a while. But today I'm here to look at some new 009 locomotives that I got for the narrow gauge railway. And these items that I'm looking at today are made by mini trains. So you all know what it is that I'm going to be having a look at today. It's the Brigadelloc. And the livery I've chosen is the grey livery. And I went for this livery because I think it looks rather fetching on this locomotive. And also because I have seen pictures of the real locomotives in this livery. And that inspired me to get this one. I also bought the water t tank. Or water cart, whatever you choose to call it, to go with this. The reason for that is because I like the water tank and also because I could if I wanted to run it either without the water tank or with it. But I do like the water tank and it will have to be something different to run on the layout to have a loco of running with a water tank and so I think if I'm honest I'll probably end up running this model most of the time with the water tank. But anyway, let's get these models open shall we and see what they're like. So we'll look at the locomotive first and we'll look at the water tank later. So this is the water tank which I'll put down to one side and this is the locomotive so I'll get this open and see what it's like because I have not opened this model up yet I have seen pictures of it on the internet and of course I've seen them running around on all the layouts at exhibitions and they do look really good so this bit of paper here, which I'll put to one side because we're not going to need it. Then we have this foam cover inside the box, we'll put that to one side and then we have the model in the box, which is wrapped in this cellophane sheet so I'll lift it out to the plastic tray using this cellophane sheet. Is there anything else in the box? Nope. So I'll put the packaging down to one side. I do really like these small boxes. They are really nice. So then we'll unwrap the locomotive from this cellophane sheet. And then we can now have a look at the model in detail. So first of all we're going to talk about the weight of the model. And this is very heavy, so there's a lot of weight in this, and that's good, because it needs weight, especially because of being such a small locomotive. So it does need weight in it, because, as I keep saying in these reviews, the weight in the models is there to provide the traction, so they can pull trains. Moving on to the detail now, so as you can see, we have the coupling there, on the front. And we also have rivets on the buffer beam there. Moving on to the smart box door, we don't have smart box door darts as per the prototype, but we do get some nice rivets on the hinges there, which is quite nice to see. And I do love that the smart box door is painted the same colour as the other locomotive's body, which again, it's correct to the real locomotives. In this livery, they did have the grey smart box doors as well. We also have a headlamp just on top of the smart box door there, and it does light up. It's a, it is a directional headlight, which you'll see later on when I'm running the model. 
we have a very nice chimney on the model as you can see and I do love that chimney we have a wealth of rivet detail on the water tanks as you can see there and on the cab sides as well there's also some rivet detail on top of the water tanks as well and we've also got the water filler caps they don't open on the models but then I don't really expect them to and if they did open they'd probably be more expensive than what they are but they're there and it's a nice bit of detail to have otherwise then we've got this pipe there as you can see on top of the boiler there I'm not entirely sure what that's there for because I'm no expert on these Brigadello locomotives but just look at the detail on the pipe I mean that is just amazing there is We've also got two domes there on the boiler. I believe one of them is a sandbox for this locomotive. And we've also got some nice detail there on top of this dome here, as you can see. Excuse the joint finger when I'm pointing to that bit of detail. We've got grazing in the cab windows, and there's some rivet detail on the front of the cab there. And the window trims on the front there are painted black, which looks really nice. Moving on to the cab roof now, and there is quite a bit of detail on this. We have some rivets there on the cab roof. We've also got the cab roof vent just here. And this piece of detail here. We've also got this detail here, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it might actually be a whistle. And it's painted in a nice brass colour. And then just over here, I'll just turn the camera, well, I'll turn the locomotive around rather. And this detail part just here, that hangs down this side of the cab is a bell, and that's painted a very nice brass colour we've also got a builder's plate there, crispy printed on the sides of the tanks there just underneath the sides of the cab there, as you can see and that does look very nice I do like the detail on that there's a wealth of rivet detail on the frames of the locomotive, as you can see just look at all the link motion there it's all done just like on the prototype and I can't wait to see all that moving just like you do on the real thing so that'll be nice to see there's some nice detail on the cylinders there as well now moving on to the cab interior which we don't really have any cab interior in this model what we do get is the motor or at least part of the mechanism anyway protruding inside the cab so it's it is a little bit of a shame there's no cab interior detail in there, but that's fine by me because the detail on this model and given how smooth this model runs makes up for that. And honestly I have just given this a quick test run and you'll just see how smooth she runs in a while. Moving to the back of the loco on the rear of the cab we have again a working tail lamp glazing in the rear cab windows and the window trims they're painted lots of rivet detail there on the back and again we have the coupling there moving on to the livery application on the model and it's a very nice even coat of paint there's no errors in it and also it's the correct shade of grey and as I said earlier this is quite a fetching livery on this locomotive and I do love it and what I also love as well is the black outlines running on top of the water tanks there and around the cab you know that really does lift the livery I think in my opinion and I really do love this livery moving on to the other side of the loco now there's not much detail differences on this side as per the prototype but what we do have on this side of the loco that's not on the other side again as per the prototype in real life we have some steam piping just there and that looks to be separately fitted other than that though the rest of the detail is the same Right, so that's the locomotive covered, so I'll put that to one side. And so now we're going to have a look at the water tank. So I'll open up the box and take out the foam sheet and lift out the water tank, which is wrapped in the cellophane sheet, just like the locomotive is. And we'll put the box to one side. then we'll unwrap the water tank and we can now have a look at that in detail 
So moving on to the water tank, and there is quite a wealth of detail on this. First of all, we have the foot plate there, and you get this on both ends. And that's obviously for the crew to stand on. Then we have these handles, which in this case, I believe, is to transfer the water from the tank into the locomotive. On the face plate of the water tank, we have some rivet data, as you can see. We've got separately fitted metal handrails, as you can see there. There are loads of rivets on the sides of the water tank. We've also got some very nice data on top of the water tank. Such as the water filler cap just here, which has a separately fitted metal handrail on top of that. Which looks really nice. The lift replication is again stunning. Very nice and even coat of paint in the right shade of grey. No errors in the paintwork there at all. And again, just like on the locomotive, it looks very fetching in this livery. And I do love this livery, I do. And we also have the couplings as well on the water tank to couple up to the locomotive and the stock. And we also have metal wheels as well fitted on the water tank, which is nice. Moving on to the running performance now for the Brigadelloc. And just look at how smooth this model runs. This is one of the smoothest mechanisms that I've seen. And I think this might just be the smoothest mechanism so far I've seen on a 009 locomotive. If not one of the smoothest mechanisms on a 009 loco. I mean, just look at how nice and smooth that is. And more to the point, this is how this model should run straight from the box. There's no motors burning out or anything of that nature. She's a smooth runner. And beautifully smooth as well. Right, so now we move on to the directional lights, which I'll show you before we move on to the loaded test run, although you've already seen the working lights anyway in the clips of the model running around on the layout. So there's the headlight, and it's a very bright light indeed. But then here's the light lighting in the opposite direction, and this is the second 009 loco, 
that I have with working directional lights. So that's a really nice feature. So now we move on to the loaded test run for the Brigadier Lock. And as you can see, I've got a pulling the slate tipper wagons, which are also made by Mini Trains. And if you're interested, they've got real slate loads in them. And there are a total of 11 wagons here, which the Loco is pulling, plus of course the water tank. And this just shows you why the weight is important with these models. Well I hope you've enjoyed watching the Mini Trains Brigadier Lock running around the layout. I have had to do a lot of filming for this video. I mean you know how it is with model railways, they can be unpredictable, especially when it comes to filming videos like this. But that brings us on to my conclusion for this model and overall the Mini Trains Brigadier Lock it really is a stunning model. Definitely well worth the money and I highly recommend that you go out and get one of these because this model it's just perfect and I I can't really fault it to be honest I mean okay there's no cab interior detail in the cab you have the mechanism in there but the smooth running the detail that's on the model 
and the working lights it makes up for that and I'm really glad that I went and bought one of these because I've been wanting to get one of these models for ages and I'm finally glad that I did get and I think it's safe to say I'm going to have to buy some more mini trains locomotives so that's something I shall definitely be looking forward to because mini trains they do make some great value for money models and in my opinion the Bridger, the Bridger Deloc is one of them so that now brings me on to the score and so overall I'm going to rate the Mini Trains Brigadier Deloc a 9 out of 10 which I think that's a fair score this has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the Mini Trains Brigadier Deloc as well as the water tank thank you for watching this video hope you've enjoyed it subscribe to the channel and check out my other co check out my other content and do please get us to 2000 subscribers and beyond and do continue to support my channel thank you for watching I'll see you again soon for the next video but until then over and out